Okay, doing behind the story. I have it pulled up on my thing already. Uh, we are on 20. Bite at a Time Books, Behind the Story, where we answer the questions you have about your favorite classic authors. Authors. What inspired your favorite author to write their novels? What was going on in the world at the time? Follow along with us as we tell you what was happening in the world while your favorite authors wrote your favorite classics. Classics. My name is Brie Carlisle, and I love to read and wanted to share my passion with listeners like you. All of the links for our show are in the show notes. Show notes. Today we'll be talking about the Georgian area. Area. Show notes. Today we'll be talking about the Georgian area. Georgian. Georgian. Show notes. Today we'll be talking about the Georgian era, which is one of the eras that Miss Jane Austen lived through. The Georgian era is a period in British history from 1714 to 1830 to 37, named after the Hanoverian kings George I, George II, George III, and George IV. The, the definition of the Georgian era area. The fourth. The definition of the Georgian era often extended to include the relatively short reign of William IV, which ended with his death in 1837. 37. The sub-period, that is the Regency era, is defined by the Regency of George IV as Prince of Wales during the illness of his father, George III. George III. The transition to the Victorian era was characterized in religion, social values, and the arts by a shift in tone away from rationalism and toward romanticism and mysticism. mysticism. The term Georgian is typically used in the contexts of social and political history and architecture. architecture. The term Augustan literature is often used for Augustan drama, Augustan poetry, and Augustan prose in the period 1700 to 1740s. 40s. The term Augustan refers to the acknowledgement of the influence of Latin literature from the ancient Roman Republic. In Republic. The term Georgian era is not applied to the time of the two 20th century British kings of this name, George V and George VI. Those periods are simply referred to as Georgian. Georgian, I don't know. It's Georgian. Georgian society and its preoccupations were well portrayed in the novels of writers such as Daniel Defoe, Jonathan Swift, Samuel Richardson, Henry Fielding, Lawrence Stern, Mary Shelley, and Jane Austen. Jane Austen. Characterized by the architecture of Robert Adam, John Nash, and James Wyatt, and the emergence of the Gothic Revival style, which harkened back to a supposed golden age of building design. Building design. The flowering of the arts was mostly vividly shown in the emergence most... Building design. The flowering of the arts was most vividly shown in the emergence of the Romantic poets, principally through Samuel Taylor. Building design. The flowering of the arts was most vividly shown in the emergence of the Romantic poets, principally through Samuel Taylor Coleridge, William Woodsworth, Percy Bythe Shelley, William Blake, John Keats, Lord Byron, and Robert Burns. Robert Burns. Their work ushered in a new era of poetry characterized by vivid and colorful language evocative of elevating ideas and themes. themes. The paintings of Thomas Gainsborough, Sir Joshua Reynolds, and the young J. M. W. Turner and John Constable illustrated the changing world of the Georgian period, as did the work of designers like Capability Brown, the landscape designer. Cape designer. 
Fine examples of distinct and Georgian architecture are Edinburgh's New Town, Georgian Dublin, Granger Town in Newcastle upon Tyne, the Georgian Quarter of Liverpool, and much of Bristol and Bath. The music of John Field, Handel, Hayden, Clementi, Johann Christian Bach, William Boyce, Mozart. The music of John Field, Handel, Hayden, Clementi, Johann Christian Bach, William Boyce, Mozart, Beethoven, and Mendelssohn was some of the most popular in England at that time. I know how to say Johann, for goodness sakes. That time. It was a time of immense social change in Britain, with the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution, which began the process of intensifying class divisions and the emergence of rival political parties like the Whigs and Tories. And Tories. In rural areas, the agricultural revolution saw huge changes to the movement of people and the decline of Saul. Saul? And Tories. In rural areas, the agricultural revolution saw huge changes to the movement of people and the decline of small communities, the growth of the cities, and the beginnings of an integrated transportation system. system. But nevertheless, as rural towns and villages declined and work became scarce, there was a huge increase in immigration to Canada. Into Canada the North American colonies, which became the United States during the period, and other parts of the British Empire. Empire. The evangelical movement inside and outside the Church of England gained strength in the late 18th and early 19th century. 19th century. The movement challenged the traditional religious sensibility that emphasized a code of honor for the upper class and suitable behavior for everyone else, together with faithful observ- faithful? Century. The movement challenged the traditional religious sensibility that emphasized a code of honor for the upper class and suitable behavior for everyone else, together with faithful observances of rituals. The rituals. John Wesley, 1703 to 1791, and his followers preached revivalist religion, trying to convert individuals to a personal relationship with Christ through Bible reading, regular prayer, regular prayer. and especially the revival experience. Experience. Wesley himself preached 52,000 times, calling on men and women to redeem the time and save their souls. Their souls. Wesley always operated inside the Church of England, but at his death, his followers set up outside institutions that became the Methodist Church. This church. It stood alongside the traditional nonconformist churches, Presbyterians, Congres Congressionalist. This church. It stood alongside the traditional nonconformist churches, Presbyterians, Congressionalists, Baptists, Unitarians, and Quakers. Quakers. The nonconformist churches, however, were less influ less Quakers. The nonconformist churches, however, were less influenced by revivalism. Revivalism. The Church of England remained dominant, but it had a growing evangelical revivalist faction, the Low Church. Low Church. Its leaders included William Wilberforce and Hannah Moore. Hannah Moore. It reached the upper class through the Clapham sect. Clapham sect. It did not seek political reform, but rather the opportunity to save souls through political action by freeing slaves, abolishing the duel, prohibiting cruelty to children and animals, and animals. stopping gaming, and avoiding frivolity on the Sabbath. They read the Bible every day. Every day. All souls were equal in God's view, but not all bodies, so evangelicals did not challenge the hierarchical structure of England. Eh. Every day. All souls were equal in God's view, but not all bodies, so evangelicals did not challenge the hierarchical structure of English society. Society. As R.J. Morris noted in his 1983 article, Voluntary Societies and British Urban Elites, 1780-1850, mid-18th century Britain was a stable society in the sense that those with material and ideological power were able to defend this power in an effective and dynamic manner. Dynamic manner. But in the 20 years after 1780, this consensus structure was broken. It was broken. Anglican evangelicalism, thus, as historian was broken. Anglican <sighs> words are hard. It was broken. 
Anglican evangelicalism thus, as historian Lisa Wood had argued in her book, Motes of Discipline, Women, Conservatism, and the Novel After the French Revolution, functioned as a tool of ruling class societal control, control. buffering the discontent that in France had inaugurated a revolution, yet it contained within itself the seeds for challenge to gender and class hierarchies. The Georgian period saw continual warfare with France the primary enemy. Very enemy. Major episodes included the Seven Years' War, known in America as the French and Indian War, 1756 to 63. 63. The American Revolutionary War, 1775 to 83. The French Revolutionary Wars, 1792 to 1802. 1802 the Irish Rebellion of 1798, and the Napoleonic Wars, 1803 to 15. The British won most of the wars, except for the American Revolution, where the combined weight of the United States, France, Spain, and the Netherlands overwhelmed Britain, which stood alone without allies. Allies. The loss of the 13 American colonies was a natural disaster. Disaster. Commentators at home and abroad speculated on the end of Britain as a great power. Great power. In Europe, the wars with France dragged on for nearly a quarter of a century, 1793 to 1815. 1815. Britain organized coalition after coalition, using its superb financial system to sub subsidize. 1815. Britain. 1815. Britain organized coalition after coalition, using its superb financial system to subsidize infantry forces and built up its navy to maintain control of the seas. The seas. Excuse me. The seas. Victory over Napoleon at the Battle of Tra Trafalgar. The seas. Victory over Napoleon at the Battle of Trafalgar, 1805, and the Battle of Waterloo, 1815, under Admirable Admiral. Uh. The seas. Victory over Napoleon at the Battle of Trafalgar, 1805, and the Battle of Waterloo, 1815, under Admiral Lord Nelson and the Duke of Wellington, brought a sense of triumphalism and political reaction. A reaction. The expanse of empire in Asia was primarily the work of the British East India Company, especially under the leadership of Robert Clive. Robert Clive. Captain James Cook was perhaps the most prominent of the many explorers and geographers using the resources of the Royal Navy to develop the empire and make many scientific discoveries, especially in Australia and the Pacific. The Pacific. Instead of trying to recover the lost colonies in North America, the British built up an Asia, Asia? The Pacific. Instead of trying to recover the lost colonies in North America, the British built up in Asia a largely new second British Empire. British Empire. That new empire flourished during the Victorian and Edwardian area. Area. My God, why do I keep saying area? British Empire. That new empire flourished during the Victorian and Edwardian eras, which were to follow. Were to follow. The era was prosperous as entrepreneurs extended the range of their business around the globe. Around the globe. By the 1720s, Britain was one of the most prosperous countries in the world, and Daniel Defoe boasted, "We are the most diligent nation in the world." And in the world. Vast trade, rich manufacturers. Mighty wealth, universal correspondence, and happy success have been constant companions of England and given us the title of an industrious people. Industrious people. While the other major powers were primarily motivated towards territorial gains and protection of their dynasties, such as the Habsburg and Bourbon dynasties and the House of Hohenzollern, Hohenzollern. Britain had a different set of primary interests. Interests. Its main diplomatic goal, besides protecting the homeland from invasion, was building a worldwide trading network for its merchants, manufacturers, shippers, and financiers. Financiers. This required a hegemonic royal navy so powerful that no rival could sweep its ships from the world's trading routes or invade the British Isles. British Isles. 
The London government enhanced the private sector by incorporating numerous privately financed London-based companies for establishing trading posts and opening import-export businesses across the world. Across the world. Each was given a monopoly of trade to the specified geographical region. The, region. the first enterprise was the Muscovy Company, set up in 1555 to trade with Russia. Trade with Russia. Other prominent enterprises included the East India Company and the Hudson Bay's Company in Canada. In Canada. The Company of Royal Adventures Trading to Africa had been set up in 1662 to trade in gold, ivory, and slaves in Africa. In Africa. It was re-established as the Royal African Company in 1672 and focused on the slave trade. Slave trade. British involvement in the each mm. slave trade. British involvement in the each of the four major wars, 1740 to 1783, paid off handsomely in terms of trade. In terms of trade. Even the loss of the 13 colonies was made up by a very bit of bit of terms of trade. Even the loss of the 13 colonies was made up by a very favorable trading relationship with the new United States of America. Of America. British gained dominance in the trade with India and largely dominated the highly lucrative Slade sh Slade of America. British gained dominance in the trade with India and largely dominated the highly lucrative slave, sugar, and commercial trades originating in West Africa and the West Indies. West Indies. China would be next on the agenda. On the agenda. Other powers set up similar simin oh my god. On the agenda. Other powers set up similar monopolies on a much smaller scale. Only the Netherlands emphasized trade as much as England. Which is England. Mercantilism was the basic policy imposed by Britain on its colonies. Its colonies. Mercantilism meant that the government and the merchants became partners with the goal of increasing political power and private wealth to the exclusion of other empires. Empires. The government protected its merchants and kept others out by trade barriers, regulations, and subsidies to domestic realm. Uh, empires. The government protected its merchants and kept others out by trade barriers, regulations, and subsidies to domestic industries in order to maximize exports from and minimize imports to the realm. To the realm. The government had to fight smuggling, which became a favorite American technique in the 18th century to circumvent the restrictions on trading with the French, Spanish, or Dutch. Or Dutch. The goal of mercantilism was to run trade. Or Dutch. The goal of mercantilism was to run trade surpluses so that gold and silver would pour into London. Into London. The government took its share through duties and taxes, with the remainder going to the merchants in Britain. In Britain. The government spent much of its revenue on a large and powerful royal navy, which not only protected the British colonies, but threatened the colonies of the other empires, and sometimes seized them. Seized them. The colonies were captive markets for British industry, and the goals was to enrich the goal. Seized them. The colonies were captive markets for British industry, and the goal was to enrich the mother country. country. Most of the companies earned good profits and enormous personal fortunes were created in India, but there was one major fiasco that caused heavy losses. Heavy losses. The South Sea Bubble was a business enterprise that exploded in scandal. In scandal. The South Sea Company was a private business corporation supposedly set up much like the other trading companies with a focus on South America. South America. Its actual purpose was to renegotiate previously high interest uh, South America. Its actual purpose was to renegotiate previous high interest government loans amounting to 31 million pounds through market manipulation and speculation. Speculation. It issued stock four times in 1720 that reached about 8,000 investors. Investors. Prices kept soaring every day from 130 pounds a share to 1,000 pounds a share, with insiders making huge paper profits. The profits. The bubble collapsed. Mm. The profits. The bubble collapsed overnight, ruining many spectators. Spectators. Investigations showed bribes had reached into high places, even to the king. Into the king. 
Future Prime Minister Robert Walpole managed to wind it down with minimal, minim, oh my God. Words. To the king. The future Prime Minister Robert Walpole managed to wind it down with minimal political and economic damage, although some suffering extreme loss fled to exile or committed suicide. Okay, we're almost done. To start working here soon, so. Suicide. The beginning of the Georgian era witnessed rioting by Jacobite and high church mobs in protest against the Hanoverian succession, and which included attacks on the dissenters' places of worship. Places of worship. These included the 1714 coronation riots, which occurred on the day of George I's coronation, and the riots of 1715. 1715. In response, Parliament passed the Riot Act, which granted the authorities greater powers to put down rioting. Down rioting. Although religious toleration was extensive by the standards of continental Europe, hostility to religious minorities was widespread in Britain during the 18th century and sometimes expressed itself in rioting. In rioting. The Jewish Naturalization Act, 1753, was repealed a year after it had been passed because of widespread opposition and the 1780 Georgian riots. My phone keeps ringing. I'll come back. We're back. That was an important call, so I gotta figure out where it was. The 18th century and sometimes expressed itself in rioting. Rioting is where we ended. In rioting. The Jewish Naturalization Act, 1753, was repealed a year after it had been passed because of widespread opposition and the 1780 Gordon riots in London were directed against Catholics after the Papist Acts, 1778. Need a bigger breath. Been rioting. The Jewish Naturalization Act, 1753, was repealed a year after it had been passed because of widespread opposition and the 1780 Gordon riots in London were directed against Catholics after the Papists Act, 1778, removed some of their legal disabilities. disabilities. During the 1791 Priestly riots in Birmingham, the mob targeted dissenters, including the prominent radical Joseph Priestley. Priestley. The Black Act of 1723, sponsored by Robert Walpole, strengthened the criminal code for the benefit of the upper class. Upper class. It specified over 200 capital crimes, many with intensified punishment. punishment. The crime of arson, for example, was expanded to include a burning or threat of burning haystacks. <clears throat> threat of burning. All right. Haystacks. The legal rights of defendants were something different from today. For example, suspects who refused to surrender within 40 days could be summarily judged guilty and sentenced to execution if apprehended. apprehended. Local villages were punished if they failed to find, prosecute, and convict alleged criminals due to the increase in crime at the time. And at the time. With the ending of the war in France in 1815, war with, and at the time. With the ending of the war with France in 1815, Great Britain entered into a period of greater economic depression and political uncertainty, characterized by social discontent and unrest. Rest. The radical political party published a leaflet called the Political Register, also known as the Two Penny Trash to its rivals. Its rivals. The so-called March of the Blanketeers saw 400 spinners and weavers march from Manchester to London in March 1817 to hand the government a petition. A petition. The Luddites destroyed and damaged machinery in the industrial northwest of England. West of England. The Peterloo Massacre in 1819 began as a protest rally which saw 60,000 people gathering to protest about their living standards, but was quelled by military action and saw 11 people killed and 400 wounded. wounded. The Cato Street Comparacy? Wounded. The Cato Street Conspire. Wounded. The Cato Street Conspiracy of 1820 sought to blow up the cabinet and then move on to storm the Tower of London and overthrow the government. The government. This too was thwarted with the conspirators executed or transported to Australia. Australia. 
Historians have long explored the importance of the Scottish Enlightenment as well as the American Enlightenment while debating the very existence of the English Enlightenment. I'm almost done. Get a drink. Enlightenment. English historian Peter Gay argues that the Scottish Enlightenment was a small and cohesive group of friends, David Hume, Adam Smith, Adam Ferguson, and others, who knew one another intimately and talked to one another incessantly. incessantly. Education was a priority in Scotland, both at the local level and especially in four universities that had stronger reputations than any in England. In England. The Enlightenment culture was based on close readings of new books and intense discussions that took place daily at such intellectual gathering places in Edinburgh as the Select Society, Society. and later the Poker Club, as well as within Scotland's ancient universities, St. Andrews, Glasgow, Edinburgh, and Aberdeen. And Aberdeen. Sharing the humanist and rationalist outlook of the European Enlightenment of the same time period, the thinkers of the Scottish Enlightenment asserted the importance of human reason combined with a rejection of any authority that could not be justified by reason. By reason. In Scotland, the Enlightenment was characterized by a thoroughgoing empiricism and practicality where the chief values were improved, virtue, and practical benefit for the individual and society as a whole. See, as a whole. Among the fields that rapidly advanced were philosophy, economics, history, architecture, and medicine. And medicine. Leaders included Francis Hutcheson, David Hume, Adam Smith, Dugald Stewart, Thomas Reed, William Robertson, Henry Home, Lord Kames, Adam Ferguson, John Playfair, Joseph Black, and James Hutton. James Hutton. The Scottish Enlightenment influenced England and the American colonies, and to a lesser extent, continental Europe. Until Europe. The very existence of an English and en- my stomach just made noise. Until Europe. The very existence of an English Enlightenment has been debated by scholars. By scholars. The majority of texts, books, texts. By scholars. The majority of textbooks and standard surveys make no room for an English Enlightenment. English Enlightenment. Some European surveys include England. Others ignore it, but do include coverage of such major intellectuals as Joseph Addison, Edward Gibbon, John Locke, Isaac Newton, Alexander Pope, and Joshua Reynolds. Joshua Reynolds. Roy Porter argues that the reason for the neglect was the assumption that the movement was primarily French-inspired, that it was largely a religious or anti-clerical, and it stood in outspoken defiance to the established order. Established order. Porter admits that after the 1720s, England could claim few thinkers to equal Diderot, Voltaire, or Rousseau. Or Rousseau. Indeed, its leading intellectuals such as Edward Gibbon, Edmund Burke, and Samuel Johnson were all quite conservative and supported the standing order. Standing order. Porter says the reason was that Enlightenment had come early to England and had succeeded so that the culture had accepted political liberalism philosophical empiricism, and religious toleration of the sort of intellectuals on the continent had to fight for against powerful odds. odds. The coffeehouse culture provided an ideal venue for enlightened conversation. conversation. Furthermore, England rejected the collectivism on the continent and emphasized the improvement of individuals as the main goal of enlightenment. Enlightenment. The British sponsored numerous scientists who made major discoveries in the small laboratories. laboratories. Joseph Priestley investigated electricity. electricity. Chemist Henry Cavendish identified hydrogen in 1772. 72. Daniel Rutherford isolated nitrogen in 1774, while Priestley discovered oxygen and ammonia. And ammonia. Antiquarians and archaeologists mapped the past. The past. In medicine, in 1717, Lady Mary Wortley Montague introduced inoculation against smallpox in Britain, and by 17 uh, to the past. In medicine, in 1717, Lady Mary Wortley Montagu introduced inoculation against smallpox in Britain, and by 1740, it was in wide usage. Wide usage in seven. Wide usage. Queen Charlotte's Maternity Hospital in 1739 and the Middlesex Hospital in 1745. 
45. Where I missed something. At usage. Guy's Hospital was founded in 1721. The Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh in 1729. Queen Charlotte's Maternity Hospital in 1739 and the Middlesex Hospital in 1745. 45. Asylums for the mentally ill were established, notably Bethel Hospital in Norwich, 1713, a ward for incurable lunatics at Guy's Hospital, 1728, 28. and lunatic hospitals in Manchester, 1766, and York, 1777. York was the first to be called an asylum. An asylum. Historiates, historiates, my God. An asylum. Historians debate the exact ending with the deaths of George IV in 1830 or William IV in 1837 as the usual marker. Usual marker. In most social and cultural trends, the timing varied. Timing varied. The emergence of Romanticism and literature began as early as the 1780s, but religious changes took much longer and were incomplete until around a century later. Century later. The 1830s saw important developments. <sighs> Century later. The 1830s saw important developments, such as the emergence of the Oxford movement in religion and the demise of classical architecture. Architecture. Victorians typically were disapproving of the times of the previous era. Previous era. By the late 19th century, the Georgian area. <sighs> previous era. By the late 19th century, the Georgian era was a byword for a degenerate culture. Culture. Charles Abbey in 1878 argued that the Church of England partook of the general sordidness of the age. Of the age. It was an age of great material prosperity, but of moral and spiritual poverty, such as hardly finds a parallel in our history. In our history. Mercenary motives were to predominate everywhere in the church as well as in the state. State. Thank you for joining Bite at a Time Books, Behind the Story today, while we answered some of the questions you have about one of your favorite classic authors. All of the links for our show are in the show notes. The show notes. Our show is part of the Bite at a Time Books Productions Network. Productions Network. If you would also like to hear a story by the author we are currently featuring, check out the Bite at a Time Books podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Right now, we are reading Emma. Reading Emma. Again, my name is Bree Carlisle, and I hope you come back next week when we answer more questions about one of your favorite classic authors. Oh my god. Thanks, guys! <laughs>